It's the AM show. OK, so a day um, barely goes by that we don't talk about Donald Trump. We talk about him all the time, don't we? The leader of the United States. But what we haven't spoken about so much is how his politics are affecting New Zealand. Are they affecting New Zealand at all? What about the world? And who is Trump? What's he really like when you turn off the cameras and you turn off the microphone and there's just you and him in the room? Not that there would be, but you know what I mean. What's, what's he like in the room, you know? Daniel J. Mitchell is in New Zealand with the New Zealand Initiative to make sense of what Trump's policies mean uh, for America's trading partners like New Zealand. So it's quite, a, it's a, quite an interesting link, isn't it? He joins me now. Um, welcome to New Zealand. Well, thank you. Nice to have you here. What's he like? What is Donald Trump like when you turn off the cameras, you turn off the microphone and you're dealing with him? What's he like? Donald Trump is authentic. For better or worse. And I think that's one of the reasons that a lot of people voted for him. They're so used to phony Washington politicians. So that they suddenly get this choice. You can vote for your uncle who spouts off at Christmas dinner. And by God, they did. <laughs> to my <laughs> surprise, to everyone else's surprise. Is that how you, I mean, the awkward uncle, is he? Uh, he has, as you know, strong opinions. He doesn't hesitate saying them. And they don't have to necessarily match up. Uh, the, he doesn't necessarily have to have any background, any knowledge, any defense of his opinions. He has gut instincts, some of which I like, some of which I don't like, and that's pretty much the description of Washington right now. What, what do you like about him? Well, I think he wants to reduce red tape and make uh, America a bigger energy producer. Uh, I think he's going to have some court appointments that uh, might begin to sort of rein in the power of the central government, and I would rather have state and local governments having more authority in America. Uh, on the other hand, I desperately think we need to deal with long-term budget pressures, and Trump doesn't seem to be serious about that. I don't and think he sees it far out, does he? Well, I guess he's, uh, what, 71? He probably may, might not think it matters because he won't be around. Yes. Uh, the big fight that we're having right now uh, is on the tax policy. He, he already tried and whiffed on uh, Obamacare. He's basically not trying to deal with the underlying budget problems, and now he's going to try to cut our corporate tax rate, which, by the way, I would love if that happened, but it, we're having a hard time getting those things through, even though Republicans control everything, because Trump isn't a party leader. He's an independent guy who came in who just happened to be on the Republican ticket. I mean, is he powerful? I mean, does he have influence? I've been to Washington a few times, and it is a massive, massive, massive web of corridors and secret corridors and people at every turn. Does he have genuine influence? Well, Trump talks about the swamp, and, and there's no question there is this giant permanent bureaucracy. There is this sort of Washington establishment, both Republicans and Democrats are part of it, and, and moving that that swamp in one direction or another is a very difficult undertaking, uh, undertaking, especially for an outsider like Trump, who Republicans in Congress don't necessarily feel loyal to. Now, they might be afraid of him because his, his tweets, his tweets are, are now the dominant thing in Washington. Every day, political journalists, commentators, policymakers, they wake up to see what is he saying. It's like a memo, and, isn't it? And, and, that's, and that is driving the daily debate. And by the way, my Democratic friends go crazy because they say Trump, the, any one day he does something where they, oh, now we got him, we can attack him. But then the next morning he sends out a new tweet and totally... The, the story from yesterday vanishes. Does New Zealand have any... I mean, how's, how's New Zealand going to fear under um, a Donald Trump presidency? I mean, do we, does it matter? The good news is that Donald Trump probably knows New Zealand exists but has no animosity to New Zealand. Uh, you're a good country in his mind. Uh, the bad news is that there is an issue where Trump is very much on the wrong side where New Zealand could get hurt, and that's trade. Uh, right now, we're afraid he's going to blow up NAFTA. Well, what if he does that and then decides, let's blow up the WTO? Now, in theory, all that does, it doesn't affect your trade with Australia or Japan or Chile, but America is a major trading partner for New Zealand. And if he starts erecting a wall around America, that's not going to be, it's going to be terrible for our economy, but you guys will be collateral damage. Yeah, well, with the TPP, I mean, he's already ripped that up. I mean, um, the, you know, and there's been a real concern about the Trans-Pacific Partnership here in New Zealand. And Donald Trump suddenly became the protesters' friends around this because he said, first thing he did, well, gone. I, I, let, let's be realistic. TPP was probably dead before Donald Trump even announced. I mean, unfortunately, I'm, I'm a free trader, so I say this with sadness. The pro-trade consensus that we've had ever since the end of World War II has run out of steam. So the real question is, do we simply plateau or do we actually start moving backwards? And well, that's does, what I'm afraid well, of. How does that affect us? Because we are free traders. We were, we, we were first to go out there. We don't have regulations and barriers. We just go to the world and say, let's trade. We have to. We're four and a half million people at the bottom of nowhere, basically. Well, that's why New Zealand's in the top five in these economic freedom rankings. You guys have done a great job under both labor and national governments over the last 30, 40 years. But 
if Donald Trump moves us backwards, I mean, if we plateau and we simply don't make any additional progress, hey, that's not too bad because we have made a lot of progress since World War II. But if we start going backwards, that's what worries me because what if other countries then do the same thing? It could be like the 1930s all over again. How does that again. impact us? How does that impact us, that, 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 that potential regression? Well, just look at what your trade is as a share of GDP, and anything that throws sand in the gears on that is not going to be good for New Zealand. And that's that's my number one worry about Donald Trump. In the short run, in the long run, I'm worried that he's not serious about dealing with entitlement programs because we have the same problems that Greece and Italy and France have. Mm. So realistically, do you think Trump will last the four years? And if not, when do you think he'll be gone? Well, considering I didn't think he would get the Republican nomination, and then I didn't think he was going to win the White House, you're asking the wrong person on, on predictions. It's the, the one word I use when speaking to foreign audiences on Trump is chaos. Now, maybe it'll turn out in some sense to be chaos in some good ways, but for the most part, everyone thinks it won't end well. Now, are we right? Are the concerns uh, being exaggerated? I have no idea. But what about on the ground? What's the feeling with general Americans? Do they support him? Because we're just sort of getting one thing from international reports. But the people on the ground support him. The people on the ground hate the Washington establishment, the so-called swamp that Trump cleverly tapped into. Uh, and I think with Trump, what they did is they said, we're going to pull the pin on a grenade and we're going to throw it to Washington. Now, that doesn't mean that the grenade doesn't hit you with some shrapnel, you know, but at least you're doing something. And I think that's what was happening. The American people said, you know, blankety blank, we're not going to take it anymore. We're going to try to change things in Washington. And they did. Daniel, are you a Republican? Uh, I'm a philosophically a libertarian. I believe in more individual freedom and more economic freedom. And that means that in a few ways, I like Donald Trump. In a lot of ways, I don't like Donald Trump. And he won't like you. You'll be public enemy number one because uh, you predicted that he wouldn't get the nomination. Uh, so you're gone on that one. You predicted he wouldn't win the election. You're gone on that one. He would, I mean, you're the kind of target he would love. Well, I feel sad. He's never tweeted against me, so I feel like inadequate. <laughs> and so, you know, my life won't be complete unless I get we'll uh, put this online. No, shall no, we? no, no, no. We need to. No, 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 no. We need to do it now. We need to. Do, we need to get you live tweeting now and see if the president comes back to you. Is there a good chance? Uh, I don't. I'm, I'm too much of a uh, worker bee to, I think, rise to his attention. Because I, I, I write about policy in Washington. Yes. I don't write about the politics, and therefore, I'm much less likely to be a uh, the target. A target yes. yes. Although he wouldn't like you. Um, what about? Um, um, the world in three and a half years' time at the end of this presidency, if he gets to, if he gets to that, what does it look like? Paint me a quick picture of the world. Uh, if he starts unraveling world trade and that leads to tit-for-tat protectionism around the world, that could be a very bad scenario. Of course, there are things like North Korea and Iran that I'm not capable of uh, commenting. I have to assume we're not going to get all blown up. Uh, but 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 here's here's a concern that existed before Trump got elected. What if there's a big bubble in the global economy, a debt bubble, a financial bubble because of all the central bank policies? That's not even Trump's fault. So, but if I was to name one thing that worries me about a potential global recession, that would be it. And if Trump, Trump of course could trigger it with a bunch, a bunch of protectionism. Right. So if you want to, if you want to settle up in New Zealand, if you want to buy a house, you could do it now. There's a short window of opportunity before a potential change of government, so you can buy a place now. Okay, you're a safe zone. All right, good. New Zealand. Hey, nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Really interesting. Five